to my dear friend, Congressman Billy Long, one of the great conservative voices on Capitol Hill. Billy and I have known each other a while. We served for a little bit of time on Capitol Hill, and I can tell you he's a man of integrity, loves his family, loves his country, but he also knows the introduction I prefer is a little bit shorter. I'm a Christian, a conservative, and a Republican in that order. And it's just amazing to me that a little more than six weeks ago, I accepted my party's nomination humbly accepted my party's nomination, not just to run, but to serve as the next Vice President of the United States of America. And I want to tell you, I joined this campaign in a heartbeat, because you have nominated a man for president that I have come to know personally. He is a man who loves this country, who believes in a boundless future for the American people. He is a fighter. He is a winner. And until very recently, it seemed like he was out there fighting on his own. But now this movement is coming together. This party is coming together. We're going to elect Donald Trump as the next president of the United States of America. And you just heard Billy say it, this campaign is winning hearts and minds every day. The momentum is palpable. Yesterday we were in Campfield, Pennsylvania. We just dropped by, we dropped by a county fair, and there looked to be about 50,000 people that came out to see Donald Trump today, ahead by nine in the latest poll here in Missouri. And even CNN reported today that Donald Trump is in the lead. <laughs> that had to hurt. You know, people ask me all the time, they say, well, what is it about Donald Trump, now that you've gotten to know him a little bit? And I just tell them, I think the appeal of the man is that he just, Donald Trump just gets it, right? I mean, he's a genuine article. He's a doer in a game usually reserved for talkers. And when Donald Trump does his talking, he doesn't go tiptoeing around those thousands of rules of political correctness that the media lays in the path of men and women who want to make a difference. He tells it like it is, straight from his heart, straight from his mind, and the American people hear him loud and clear. You know, the funny thing is, the party in power just seems helpless to figure out our nominee. And of course, I'm talking about the media. I mean, here's the media and the, the Democrats all just, they all think the usual methods are going to work against Donald Trump, don't they? I mean, they spend more time talking about what he said or tweeted in the last 30 minutes than they do talking about what the Clintons have been up to for the last 30 years. But the American people see right through it. It just is amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it's so funny to me because it's, it's like they said, you can just see late night on TV, you'll see the little panels, everybody's all talking to each other, and then they go, we got them this time. This is it. This is the one that's going to do them in. And then you turn the TV on the next morning, and Donald Trump is still standing stronger than ever before, fighting for the American people, and he's going to fight all the way to the White House on November the 8th. And he's fighting because his team really is coming together. It's coming together around a lot of great people like the, con the congressman who introduced me. Coming together around a, a lot of great people here in Missouri. And I know he can't be here today because he's serving in Washington, D.C. But can I just ask you on behalf of Donald Trump and me, let's send Roy Blunt back to the United States Senate with a landslide of support. And for heaven's sakes, Missouri, it's time for strong, conservative, Republican leadership in the governor's office. We need to elect Eric Greitens as the next governor, as the next governor of the state of Missouri. Would you give him a rousing round of applause? This man has served this country in uniform, and now he's going to serve as your great governor. Thank you, Eric. Thanks so much for being here. You know, these great leaders in Donald Trump understand the people of this great state and understand the people of this country. In the case of my running mate, I can promise you, he's never forgotten the men and women, the men and women who built this country. He's a builder himself. And to be around him, 
In casual conversations, you hear the language of a builder, someone who has never forgotten the men and women who work with their hands, who build our roads and bridges, who grow our food, who tend to our sick, who teach our kids. And I promise you this, Donald Trump will never forget or fail to stand with the men and women of law enforcement in the United States of America. You know, we've got a fair amount of law enforcement personnel with us today. Would you all show these men and women who serve on the thin blue line how much we appreciate them and the sacrifices they and their family make to protect ours? You know, as the Chief Law Enforcement Officer of the United States of America, Donald Trump is going to support our law enforcement at every level with the resources they need to protect our families and go home safe to theirs. And in a time of great challenge, in many larger communities, particularly across this country, and in small towns beset by the, uh, by the rise of the illicit trade and drug abuse, Donald Trump is going to be a president that will restore law and order to every city and every town in this nation. You know, it really is pretty amazing at the very moment when America is crying out for something, for something new and different. The other party has come forward with a stale agenda and the most predictable of names. People in both parties are restless for change, ready to break free from a failed establishment in Washington, D.C. Yet the other party actually nominated someone who literally personifies everything that this country is tired of out of our nation's campaign. So let's just decide right here and now in the great state of Missouri that for all the reasons I will remind you of in the rest of this town hall, let's decide here and now that Hillary Clinton will never be elected president of the United States of America. You know, I really believe, I really believe, and I'm, I'm grateful that you all are here. I'm going to slide to your questions in just a little bit. But I think it's important for us to pay more careful attention to what we already know. And Donald Trump and I believe this election comes down to, to really just a few basic things. It comes down to security and prosperity, the Supreme Court of the United States, and it comes down to making sure that we maintain the highest standards of integrity in the highest office in the land. That's what this is about. So let's start with the first. Seven and a half years of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton's leadership on the international stage has weakened America's place in the world. It really is extraordinary to think of it. Terrorist attacks at home and abroad, grim, heartbreaking scenes, and our allies attempted coups. It seems if you look, if you look at a map of the wider Middle East from 2009 when they took office and she became Secretary of State. And look at a map today, you can barely recognize it. It truly is, feels some days like parts of the world are just spinning apart. You know, history teaches us that weakness arouses evil. And I would submit to you, Donald Trump and I believe, that the weak foreign policy of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton leading from behind, moving red lines, feigning resets with Russia, the rise, rule, and reign of ISIS are a testament to this truth of history. You know, I heard, uh, I heard that a little bit later today, Hillary Clinton's running mate is going to be making a speech in North Carolina on the, on her record on national security and on foreign affairs. What a coincidence. So am I. I mean, seriously, folks. It was Hillary Clinton's record on foreign affairs that, that helped undo all the extraordinary gains that we made in Operation Iraqi Free. I remember those challenging days in 2006. I remember a president who decided to serve forces, a president who believed that our troops could secure Iraq. And then the American soldier did. And when Iraq was handed over to this administration, it was stable. 
and secure. Can we show our thanks to all the men and women who have served in the uniform of the United States of America in recent years and throughout our history? It was Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama who, through their decision to precipitously withdraw troops from Iraq, created the very vacuum in which the appalling terrorist, murderous organization of ISIS was able to rise, virtually conjured up out of the sand, to overrun those hard-fought gains in Operation Iraqi Freedom. It was Hillary Clinton who instigated the president's disastrous agreement with the radical mullahs in Iran that culminated just a few short weeks ago on the day that Iran released four American hostages, this administration delivered a pallet with 400 million in cash as a ransom payment for Americans violating years and decades of policy in the United States. Let me make, let me make you a quick promise. When Donald Trump becomes president of the United States of America, we won't be paying ransom to terrorist sponsoring states or terrorists. They'll be paying a price if they threaten the American people or our allies or our citizens. And lastly, it was Hillary Clinton and her record on foreign affairs. Included that day that transpired on the anniversary of 9-11 in Benghazi. It was Hillary Clinton's State Department who left Americans in harm's way then told the very parents of the fallen that it had something to do with the video, and only weeks later would concede that it was a terrorist attack. And when confronted on it before the Senate, Hillary Clinton said, and I quote, what difference at this point does it make? Well, as, a, as, a, as the proud father of a United States Marine, let me say this from my heart. Anyone who said that, anyone who did that, should be disqualified from ever serving as Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the United States of America. Okay. I mean, the truth is, despite traveling millions of miles as our Secretary of State, the world is more dangerous today than the day that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton took over our foreign policy. Our allies are less secure. Our enemies are more emboldened. It's not just Iran walking away from our most cherished ally, Israel, appeasing Russia, squandering the gains in Iraq, and the list goes on. Now, last week, her running mate described uh, Donald Trump's meeting with the president of Mexico as a, quote, diplomatic amateur hour. <laughs> Even though it was universally praised as Donald Trump showed you can have broad shoulders and still stand with grace and poise on the international stage. But the, the, uh, they called it a diplomatic amateur hour. Let me say, the truth is, it's been amateur hour on the world stage for the last seven and a half years, and the American people and our allies and those who defend our freedom know it. Maybe that's why today I'm proud to say 88 retired generals and admirals endorsed Donald Trump as the next Commander-in-Chief of the United States of America. They know. They know what the American people know. That Donald Trump will rebuild our military. He will stand by our allies. He will stand up to our enemies. And America, again, will command the respect of the world for the safety of us all. We cannot have four more years apologizing to our enemies and abandoning our friends. America needs to be strong for the world to be safe. And Donald Trump will lead on the world stage with strength. Now, the record at home, though, is just as bad. The truth of the matter is that uh, here in Missouri and all over this country, whatever progress we've been able to make since the Great Recession has been made 
in spite of the policies coming out of Washington, D.C., not because of them. We're in the midst of the weakest economic recovery since the Great Depression. We have the lowest labor participation rate since the 1970s. You know, yesterday Donald Trump and I were, were traveling across the great state of Ohio and uh, celebrating Labor Day with a lot of good, hard-working Americans, including a lot of great members of labor unions in the state of Ohio. And it was really just incredible. Incredible to think the lowest labor participation rate, millions of Americans on the sidelines no longer looking for work. It doesn't show up in the unemployment numbers because the unemployment rate only shows uh, unemployment among people that are actively seeking work. And probably most heartbreaking of all, there are nearly 7 million more Americans living in poverty today than the day that Barack Obama became president of the United States. Hillary Clinton's answer to all of that is more of the same. More taxes, more spending, more Obamacare, more of the same war on coal and energy that's been waged by this administration from day one. Hillary Clinton is calling for more than a trillion dollars in tax increases and more than a trillion dollars in new spending. At a time that America is inching ever closer to $20 trillion in debt that we're going to put on the shoulders of our children and our grandchildren. When she was asked the other day how she was going to pay for all these new big government programs, she said this, quote, I'll tell you how we're going to pay for it. We're going to go where the money is. We're going after the super wealthy. We're going after the corporations. We're going after Wall Street, close quote. Well, she certainly knows where all those things are. The truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, as Margaret Thatcher said many years ago, the problem with socialism is you eventually run out of other people's money. You know, the truth is, you hear those rosy speeches and you hear them up on the platform talking about how things are good in America and people here in Missouri and people across this country know, know a little bit different. They tell us this economy is the best that we can do. But we know better. It's nowhere near the best that we can do. It's just the best they can do. And when Donald Trump becomes president of the United States of America, we're going to unleash the boundless energy of the American economy and put Americans back to work. Donald Trump has a plan. Donald Trump has a plan to reignite the American economy through tax reform, rolling back red tape, trade reform, and energy reform. Cutting taxes across the board for people in Missouri, lowering taxes for working families, small businesses, and family farms, ending death taxes once and for all, and lowering... And we're going to lower business taxes in this country so that companies in Missouri can create jobs in Missouri and keep them in the United States of America. And Donald Trump is committed to rolling back red tape in this country. You know, there's two kinds of taxation coming out of Washington, D.C. One is the kind of taxation that takes money out of your pocket and decides how to spend it, and the other is you pass a regulation and tell businesses and individuals how they're going to spend their own money, right? And regulation is a form of taxation. And on day one, Donald Trump's going to do what we did back in the Hoosier State, what I know Eric Grimes is going to do when he arrives in Missouri, and that is Donald Trump is going to freeze all new federal regulation and repeal every Obama executive order that's stifling jobs in this economy. And I'll tell you what, when Donald Trump becomes Negotiator-in-Chief, that term's not in the Constitution, yet. When Donald Trump becomes Negotiator-in-Chief, I promise you, this clear-eyed business leader is going to step out on the world stage just like he did last week. We're going to renegotiate NAFTA so that it supports jobs in the United States of America. We're going to get out of these multinational deals like TPP, and we're going to have trade that works for the American worker once and for all.
And lastly, Donald Trump and I both believe that the strength of this nation is found in our people, in their character, and in their faith, and in their freedom. But it's also found here in Missouri and all across America in the vast natural resources of this nation. And I promise you, on day one of the Trump administration, Donald Trump will end the war on coal and unleash the boundless energy of the American energy economy. Now, a lot of economists, a lot of economists think that's going to make a real difference. There are economists out there that see that the ideas that were last put into effect back in the early 1980s and caused the largest, longest peacetime expansion since World War II are going to do that again. But Hillary Clinton actually said she thought that optimistic projections about the economy were, quote, wildly unrealistic. Okay? Well, the only thing wildly unrealistic is the idea that you can elect the same people with the same bad ideas and expect a different result. Donald Trump and I know for a different result in America, we need different leadership with new ideas, and that's going to come from President Donald Trump. And two more things before I get to your questions, and I'm anxious to hear what's on your mind. Build the wall. First and foremost, I figured that was. First and foremost, you know, we're electing a president for the next four years on November the 8th, but that president is probably going to set the course and direction of the Supreme Court of the United States for the next 40 years. That's something we need to think about. The truth of the matter is, elect Hillary Clinton, and you better get used to being subject to more unelected judges using unaccountable power to make unconstitutional decisions. Legislating from the bench, which is the model of the liberal jurist in the Supreme Court and all across our federal judiciary today. So I want to say each one of you, as you leave here today and talk to neighbors and friends in the days that remain, I think 62 days through now election day, remind them of this. If you care about our Constitution, limited government, the rule of law, the sanctity of life, the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States, if you care about all the God-given liberties that are enshrined in the founding documents of the United States of America, then we must decide here and now in Missouri that the next president making appointments to the Supreme Court of the United States is President Donald Trump. So it's about security. Men and women in Missouri, it's about security. It's about prosperity and jobs, and it's about the Supreme Court of the United States. But it's also about making sure that we have the highest standards of integrity in the highest office in the land. And just in a remarkable several weeks, just a cascade of controversies, one revelation after another coming out of uh, details released about the Clinton Foundation. I mean, Hillary Clinton said she had turned over all of her emails except for the ones having to do with yoga and the wedding plans. <laughs> now we found, now we found more than 15,000 additional emails dealing with national security, even classified information that was allowed to be on her own private server, exposed to hacking. I mean, I have to be honest with you, I'm experiencing Clinton's scandal fatigue. But there is a cure. There is a cure for Clinton scandal fatigue, and that is electing Donald Trump as the next president of the United States of America. But the avalanche of facts, we find out that, that uh, 85 of the 154 meetings that she gave to private individuals while she was Secretary of State were given to people who had given tens of millions of dollars to the Clinton Foundation. We found out that she used a high-tech software program called BleachBit to clean her server literally after 
it had been revealed in the New York Times that, that she had a private email system. I mean, this is really extraordinary to think about. It. Here's your timeline. March 2nd, 2015, the New York Times reported the existence of her private email system. March 4th, 2015, the House Benghazi Committee subpoenaed emails from that system. March 9th, 2015, what's called a preservation request was sent to the Platte River Networks, the company handling her private server. March 25th, they held a conference call with her staff. And sometime between March 25th and March 31st of 2015, an employee of that company wiped her email server with a high-tech bleach bit program deleting all of her emails. It's extraordinary to think about it, man. You know, it's, uh, it was a long time ago when I was still a boy and I remember a, a president who deleted 18 and a half minutes of tape. And was held accountable for that. And now Hillary Clinton deleted almost 18,000 emails. That doesn't look like politics, folks. That looks like obstruction. And the American people are sick and tired of it. We must have the highest standards of integrity in the highest office in the land. When Donald Trump becomes president of the United States, the days of this rigged system for the favored few will come to a crashing end. He will uphold the highest standards of integrity in the highest office in the land, and his only special interest will be you, the American people. You know, let me, uh, let me close with just a quick thought. I mean, I hope you came here today to, to be reminded of uh, why you were part of this movement. I hope you came here today to hear, uh, hear a word of encouragement. But I hope you leave here today with a burden on your heart to go tell somebody here in Springfield. To reach out to a neighbor and a friend and talk to them about the stakes in this election. The stakes of our security, our prosperity, our Supreme Court, and our high standards and expectations. But I hope you also say one other thing, and I think it's been in high relief just in the last few weeks. And that is, I, I hope you'll communicate to people not just the choice in this election, which couldn't be more dramatic. I hope you'll communicate to people in this election. We have in Donald Trump and his uh, running mate from India. <laughs> A couple of people that really believe in our heart of hearts that there will always be more in this country that unites us in these United States of America than will ever divide us. Yeah. I mean, when you hear Donald Trump speak passionately about his vision for this country, we both come by it honestly. We both have literally, in our families, in just two short generations, we've seen the American dream unfold in unique and in different ways, but it's been the American dream. I mean, both of our grandfathers immigrated to this country. Uh, both of them helped build businesses and raise great families. His dad was a self-made man who started in the building business, and, uh, and my dad was a self-made man who grew up in Chicago and took that immigrant's daughter down to a little town in southern Indiana, bought a house with a cornfield in the backyard, and built a little gas station business down there. And Donald Trump and I were both believed that to do much is given, and much will be required. And, and so for him, it meant, the kids from Queens, it meant going to Manhattan Island, building some of the biggest buildings in the world, and, and a name known across the country and across the world. For me, it was a calling into public service. I mean, truthfully, other than a whole bunch of zeros, he and I had an awful lot in common. I mean, a whole bunch. But we both lived the American dream. We really did. We were blessed to be raised in great families. We were blessed to have a foundation of faith in our life. And blessed to believe very simply that anybody can be anybody in this country. And so I hope as you go out to the, from, from this place in Missouri and you talk to your neighbors and friends, I, boy, we've got to draw the line. We've got to say to people, this is a binary choice in this election, okay? 
All right? We've got to say to people, Lord, you're either going to choose, you're going to choose a leader who's going to take America back to strength at home and abroad, uphold our Constitution, uphold the rule of law, and uphold the highest standards, or we're going to have more of the same failed policies that have weakened America's place in the world, stifled our economy, and walked away from our constitutional traditions and our standards. We've got to lay that choice out, but I hope we also say that when you see it on that hat, Make America Great Again. It's, it's a message that includes every single person in this country. It's a message that says Donald Trump and I believe we can bring the American dream back for every American, regardless of race or creed or color, and bring prosperity and opportunity to every family in this nation once again. Okay. So the choice cannot be more clear. So I prepare to run to your uh, questions here. We can, uh, we can elect someone who literally personifies a failed establishment in Washington, D.C. who can elect a leader who will fight for the American people to make America great again. Here's your choice, if, in case you take a note. If you want a president who will protect this nation, rebuild our military, Stand with those in uniform, stand with our allies, stand up to our enemies, and hunt down and destroy the terrorist elements in the world who threaten our people and threaten our freedom. If you want a president who will stand with our law enforcement community in America and give them the support they need and deserve to restore law and order to every city and every town in this nation, if you want a president who will cut taxes, grow this economy, squeeze every nickel out of that bloated federal bureaucracy, and repeal Obamacare lock, stock, and barrel. If you want a president who will build a wall on our southern border, secure this nation, Enforce our laws, remove criminal aliens, establish an E-verify system, and make the center of this debate the American citizen and the people who are in this nation legally. And if you want a president who will appoint justices, who will uphold the Constitution, and if you want a president who will upend the status quo in Washington, D.C., then my message to you is this, to you and your neighbors and your friends, we only have one choice if you want all of that. And I promise you, that man is ready. That's right. This team is ready. Yeah. This movement is ready. Let's go make sure Missouri is ready, and we will elect Donald Trump as the 45th president of the United States of America. And with his leadership, we will make America great again.